Every person is born with the instinct to hunt. From the beginning, we hunted to eat, to survive. Over time, some things may have changed, but for the few individuals that this life has chosen, the instinct is still very much alive. We can't sleep at night, making plans, strategies, and the animals we pursue are in our dreams all day long. Hundreds of hours and thousands of miles are spent every season facing challenges that most people will never experience in their whole lifetime. And what is it that guides us to success? Is it luck, persistence, skill? Maybe all the above play a certain role. Maybe it's the adrenaline rush of a white-tailed deer walking on freshly fallen oak leaves, or the thunder of an early morning gobble. Maybe that's what keeps us going. Or maybe it's something even bigger. Maybe it's the understanding and the knowledge that because of us hunters, the animals we hunt thrive. There is no right or wrong answer, just a shared passion. This is Antler Ice. So although it's the off season and all the hunting seasons are closed, Mike and I are heading to a place where over 1,100 species of animals could show up at any time. We are headed to Africa. Chad and Mike have traveled 9,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean to hunt a landscape with unlimited options of game. And although game animals seem to be everywhere, one of the largest predators on the planet is first on the agenda. During the wet season, crocodiles travel the rivers and waterways and go wherever their prey is found. But as the rain passes, the sun dries the water, sometimes leaving crocodiles within reach of humans. The guys have a report that a giant crocodile has been near a local village, and it's causing a lot of problems for the villagers. After a few hours of checking on the areas where the croc had been spotted, the guys finally catch a break. We spotted a crocodile, what we think was a crocodile just some ripples in the water. And this pond is not very big. So we come all the way around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get to this bank, kind of belly crawl up and see if we can't find it. See if we can't see what we saw. We're not even sure if it was a crack. That's our first African game right there. And that's a crocodile. Hello, Mark. It's estimated that close to 200 people every year are killed in the jaws of crocodiles. But thanks to Chad and Mike, this beast will not be adding to that statistic, as the largest apex predator in Africa has been put to rest. A big crocodile has fallen, and it's not long until the game-rich landscape of Africa is producing more and more opportunities for the hunters. 
and Mike and Chad are taking full advantage of the situation. So we are in Africa, the most game-rich country in the world. It's time for Mike and I to start checking some animals off our list. With a big blessed buck anchored, it's not long until a huge herd of blessed buck are spotted feeding in the Kalahari. And Chad is up. A giant Nile crocodile, and now two blessed buck are down in Africa. Although huge numbers of plains game are present and opportunities are plentiful, the blessed buck have proven to be tough. But Chad and Mike got it done, and there's no time to waste as a large herd of spring buck have been spotted about a mile off. right on the other side of this plane here. We're gonna try and get this bush and try and make a good shot. So hopefully, let's go. There's one standing looking at right at you. You can feed him on the shoulder. Yep. You can feed him on the shoulder. Yep. 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 Oh! oh ho, ho. That is how it's done! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks. I just smacked, uh, smacked a spring buck, so we're gonna run up here and make sure he doesn't get away and keep him down. So it's good up there. Right, he's gone. Let's go. These guys are tough, man. We stalked and stalked and stalked, and we went a long ways before we got a crack at them. Just when you think you're about ready, they turn, or they move, or they start moving again, or they cross. Like, it is just, it's a waiting game, and we waited. But... Hunting in Africa has been an unbelievable experience so far for the Antler Ice crew, and this trip is just getting started.
one of Africa's fastest antelope, and Mike's number one animal on his hit list is down with a perfectly placed shot. And with one gems buck down, Chad's number one animal has been spotted. Mike and I have already piled up some great animals in Africa, but with a little bit of time left, we have some particular species that we're going to start targeting. We spotted our first group of black wildebeest. You can see that they're a long ways off right now on the plane. Basically we have zero cover, but there's a lot of coolies in here. There's a big tree here, so we're going to kind of angle ourselves. The wind's perfect. It's blowing straight this way. We're going to try to swing around, keep that tree, use that tree for cover, use these coolies for cover, and uh, hopefully get in within that 100, 150 yard shot so I can shoot one. It's got to be a big bow in that group somewhere, so that's our plan anyways. What do you think, Mike? Should work out. He's on the left, right? He's on the left. He's looking at you. This was one of the animals that uh, was at the top of my list when I came with the black wildebeest. Because of hunting and sportsmen as conservationists, the black wildebeest is a true success story. Over the last 60 years, the population of this magnificent animal has bounced back from endangered numbers to over one and a half million roaming the plains of Africa today. And this big bull is coming back to the U.S. with Chad. With a black wildebeest in the salt, its cousin, the blue wildebeest, is now high priority for Chad. The closest one to it. Out front? The one out front? Got him. We come down over this hill looking for a, another impala for Mike. And a whole group of blue wildebeest busted out of these rocks. And they come running right out in this field. And it is a giant ball. And uh, basically it was kind of a scramble. Give him like the camera, I'm getting the gun because I wanted a blue wildebeest. That was the last animal on my, oh, I wanted to shoot a lot more animals, but that was the last one on my list that I wanted to take. He is a giant. We're gonna give him about two more seconds. We're gonna walk up and see him but he's totally toast. The rest of the herd is completely gone. That thing is enormous. That is awesome. But today, you know, it's just one of those things. I shot an Impala, you know, not, well, probably one ridge over. Uh, we were glassing, spotted some other animals up in here, so we come around to, to see what they were, and, and right out of the brush, 
you know, 40 yards in front of us, this whole herd of blue wildebeest come running out. And Even more success for the guys in Africa. And as this trip to the dark continent is winding down, it's not quite over. Africa has been amazing. We are definitely making plans to come back. Got him. Running. All by himself. On a continent with over 1,100 species of mammals roaming the vast landscape, Chad and Mike have spent the last few weeks observing, learning, and trying to understand and take in all that the dark continent of Africa has to offer. From the culture, to the people, to the hunting, the experience has left the guys with an understanding of how important hunting and game conservation really is. It is because of hunters and the money and effort spent by hunters that opportunities such as this safari are possible. And if there is one thing that is true of a hunter that experienced Africa, it becomes part of them. And the guys will be back. Holy <laughs> look at my eyes. Uh, Mike, you are so burnt. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling you. Yeah, I didn't realize this. It doesn't look, when I'm in the dark in my room, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling you and you say, oh no, it's always like that. I, it is always like that. But that's... <laughs> 
That looks hilarious. Look at that.